Hello, and welcome back once again to Infinite Jeff, the project where I, the man named Jeff, Jeff. I read the book Infinite Jest, one page at a time, one day at a time, put it up on YouTube.com for everyone to hear, including you. What? What what is Infinite Jest? You might be asking yourself after 200 some pages. It's a book by David Foster Wallace. And it's, it's, um, a gargantuan mind altering comedy about the pursuit of happiness in America. Yep. That's it. That's it. That's it. Nailed it. We're on to page 211 of this book. Uh, one more half page of the uh, tattoo talk, and then we go back to the uh, tennis players and the drug use. So here we go. 211. Got at the canteen or one at cribbage and dominoes. MDC regs prohibit straight out cards. Or got in mass quantities off smaller inmates in return for protection from the romantic advances of larger inmates. Gately is right-handed, and his arms are roughly the size of Tiny Ewell's legs. His wrist's jailhouse square is canted, and has sloppy extra blobs at three of the corners. Your average jailhouse tat can't be removed, even with laser surgery, because it's incised so deep in. Gately is polite about Tiny Ewell's inquiries, but not expansive, i.e., Tiny has, Tiny has to ask very specific questions about whatever he wishes to know, and then gets a short, specific answer from Gately to just that question. Then Gately stares at him, a habit Ewell tends to complain about at some length up in the five-man room. His interest in tattoos seems to be regarded by Gately not as invasive, but as the temporary obsession of a still-quivering, substanceless psyche that in a couple weeks will have forgotten all about tattoos, an attitude Ewell finds condescending in the extremists. Gately's attitude towards his own primitive tattoos is a second category attitude, with most of the stoicism and acceptance of his tet regret sincere, if only because these irrevocable emblems of jail are minor rung bells compared to some of the fucked up and really irrevo- irrevocable impulsive mistakes Gately's made as Gately made as an active drug ad- addict and burglar, not to mention their consequences, the mistakes which Gately's trying to accept he'll be paying off for a real long time. Section Break Michael Pemulus has this habit of looking first to one side and then over to the other before he says anything. It's impossible to tell whether this is a unaffected or whether Pemulus is emulating some film noir type character. It's worse when he's put in a, put away a couple drins. Drines, drins, and, you know, dexedrin. He and Trevor Axford in Hell in Condensa are in Pemulus's room, with Pemulus's roommates Shat and Trolscht down at lunch. So they're alone, Pemulus and Axford and Hal, stroking their chins, looking down at Michael Pemulus's yachting cup on his bed. Laying inside the overturned hat, yachting cap on his bed, I should say, laying inside the overturned hat are a bunch of fair-sized but bland-looking tablets of the allegedly incredibly potent DMZ. Pemulus looks all around behind them in the empty room. This, in caster, axe handle, is the incredibly potent DMZ, the great white shark of organosynthesized hallucinogens, the gargantuan feral infant of, Hal says, we get the picture. The Yale U of the Ivy League of Acid, says Axford. Your ultimate psychosensual distorter, Pemulus sums up. I think you mean psychosensory, unless I don't know the whole story here. Axford gives Hal a narrow look. Interrupting Pemulus means having to watch him do the head thing all over again each time. Alright, that was page number 211 of the Infinite Jest. Moving right along, I would say we're about a fifth of the way through the book. This journey that you and I have taken together. So, 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 so. <laughs> On that note, I will bid you a jail. <laughs>